Now look at human physiology. We were arboreous, hunter-gatherers, sleeping on the forest and sleeping on the branches of trees when we were hunter-gatherers. And we could eat only what was available there, fruits and probably some vegetables. Now very interestingly, this was the era when we were very, very healthy. Some records show that we had no illness at all. All that the causes of death were two. A, old age. B, predation. No illness. All the illnesses started in the 10,000 10, years when we sort of started living in communities and trying to eat, not just non-vegetarian stuff, trying to eat each other. That means hating one another. Today our biggest enemy is hatred. Recently, one of my articles was published in the British Medical Journal where I said, the cause of killer diseases is your mind. The silent killer in your body is not hypertension or diabetes or cancer, but your own mind. And if this mind is poisoned and it hates someone, the, your own body gets the damage and not the one who you hate. Let me tell you how it happens. If I can take a photograph of yours with a biophoton camera, I can see every cell of your body, every atom of your body emitting a photon light. And when I look at that, they are so happy dancing. If all the cells, you have about 120 trillion cells in your body. Each one of these cells loves the other cell. That apart, it loves the cells of others. My cells love Karthikeyan cells as much they love my cells. Now imagine for a minute that I hate Karthikeyan. I want to damage Karthikeyan. I want to pull the carpet under his feet. And I want to get his chair and become the director of the what is the CBI, Central Bureau of Investigation or whatever. Now what happens? My cells get so confused. My cells say, why is this fellow doing this? Karthikeyan is a part of me. Karthikeyan is like a hand or my head or my leg. So why am I harming him? So a time comes after some time, your own cells start hating your own cells. And that is what we doctors call as autoimmune disease. And you would be surprised. I just had this afternoon a SMS from a doctor in Calcutta. She is a very highly qualified doctor in FRCP. She so beautifully wrote, Professor Egde, thank you for your article on the mind in the Royal College Journal. And I have started using that on my patients with autoimmune disease. And my patients with cirrhosis liver are doing very well. Fascinating. This only goes to show that if we start loving one another, vegetarianism, non-vegetarianism and things like that pale into insignificance. Ultimately what is needed is love, universal compassion and that is what exactly is what is called good health. I will give you the definition of good health. Good health is not absence of disease. Because the definition of disease, every one of us has a disease, forget about it. But it doesn't kill you. We, we doctors connect disease with death so that they frighten you because we want more patients. I'll give you one example how we fool you. We tell you, if you're a diabetic, even if you're a South Indian eating rice, we tell you, you must start from tomorrow eating chapati. Now this creates a lot of problems in the house. The wife who doesn't know how to make chapati, she struggles to make chapati, she can't do it, and she does something which she doesn't like to do. This is very bad. Doing something which you hate kills you. Now the wife, she has to do it because she thinks the doctor has said the husband will live longer if he eats wheat. Now I'll tell you the truth. Wheat contains wheat gluten. And wheat gluten is a direct damage to the pancreas. So wheat goes directly to your beta cells in the pancreas and keeps you a diabetic permanently. That is only this is mongering. I want my business. If every diabetic gets better and if there is no diabetes at all, what does the diabetic specialist do? Did you get the message? So friends, don't believe anybody, but believe yourself. This is the most important thing. So health is enthusiasm to work. Get up in the morning and ask yourself, do I have to go to work today? And if you are enthusiastic, you say, I am healthy. Two, enthusiasm to be compassionate. Ask yourself, do I want to help somebody today? Because what does the Sanatana Dharma say? Paropakarartha vidam shariram. You are made for the benefit of others. Remember that? You are here for others' sake. And if you did that, you are absolutely healthy. That's what Ayurveda says. What does it say? Samadathu samagnischa samadoshaha malakriha prasannatma indriyamana svastaitya videte. 
you get up in the morning you sleep well you eat well you piss well you shit well you love well and you don't hate nobody you can't get any disease how do you get disease krodha you know what krodha is anger 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 and danger are just one letter apart d you add d to anger it becomes danger and anger is a, an emotion which kills you one of the very important causes of stroke is anger sudden bout of anger krodha shoka depression frustration bhaya extreme fear ayasa exhaustion viruddhanna bojana here comes the most important part the wrong type of food at the wrong time viruddhanna bojana taponalan taponalan is not doing anything sedentary life you know just lying down doing nothing lazing around sitting in the chair for hours together shortens your life span instead of sitting you stand you don't you cut your life span if you walk you lengthen your life span when you're talking you know i never rarely talk like this sitting standing in a place because you know this is only one mic supposing i have a collar mic i keep walking when i walk i circulate my blood better and i oxygenate my blood better in the lungs so the better blood goes to my brain i can think sharper and i can talk better 